welcome to another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me. Here we are, our second episode of September 2015. Um, we're going to be working with some aluminum today. I am building a small aluminum oil tank uh, for a buddy's ATV. It is going to be 6 inches by 4 inches by 4 inches basically. Something like this. It's going to have a fitting in the top. We'll be using the Eastwood uh, TIG 200 to weld it. Using the little number 9 torch here. And as you can see, we've got the tungsten with just a slight bit of ball on it. After some messing around uh, with some scrap pieces, I've got my amperage set where I like it, which is about a maximum of 130 amps. This is 1 8 inch thick T6061 aluminum T6. So I'm going to prepare the edges to be welded with a uh, stainless steel brush and we'll get ready and we'll get into it. Alright we are TIG welding here so the catch word is of course clean and since we're dealing with aluminum we need to remove that outer layer of aluminum oxide which melts at like 3400 degrees as opposed to the actual aluminum which melts at 1200 degrees so I'm just using a uh, stainless steel wire brush on a four and a half inch grinder and I'm removing that surface oxide layer on all the surfaces that are going to be weld welded that means all the way around on both sides and all the edges. This thorough cleaning along with the um, AC action of the welding will break up the aluminum oxide and allow us to weld this very nicely. After being cleaned with the wire brush all the parts are then wiped with acetone and we're ready to tack up. So you're saying to yourself, hey, aluminum is non-magnetic. Why is this idiot using magnets? Well, this idiot is using magnets just to hold this piece perpendicular to the table. The magnets attract each other and the table. So hopefully, I can use that to get a quick tack in here. Alright, even though TIG is an all position welding process, whenever possible, I like to weld in the flat position for a number of reasons. The first being, uh, I'm lazy. And number two, it's comfortable and you always want to be comfortable when you weld. I can rest the meaty part of my torch hand on the table and keep a steady arc length. And it just makes things easier and makes for a nicer bead. So, uh, why make the job any harder than it has to be just weld it however you are comfortable if you can all right i'm not going to make you watch me weld this whole thing out in real time so this is just a quickie version i've sped this up like four or five times just so you can see an idea of how the pieces go together in what order but um i'm going to weld it in this uh horizontal flat position whenever i get the chance I mean, this is a welding show, so I suppose you want to see some arc shots. I realize that mine aren't as good as, uh, let's say, Jody's, but uh, this shouldn't be too bad. I'll speed up the rest for you. 
once you have your machine settings right and you've got your arc length down and everything else TIG welding aluminum is no different than TIG welding steel move and dab, move and dab. The only difference is you really can't do a uh, fusion weld with aluminum. We're welding on the ends here, nothing different then when we welded up the sides you know I tacked them up and then we welded them out now I've sped this up here because there's no reason for you to watch in real time you know making one of these videos actually takes a, a full day I mean I've got probably close to 10 hours in this um, what you're gonna see coming up next though should be kind of exciting uh, adventures in welding now owns a lathe Personally, I think that welding and machining go hand in hand. One is the additive process, one is the subtractive process. But both of them work together uh, to shape metal into what we need it to be in today's society. So I enjoy a little bit of machining. Alright, here we are center drilling. This is the uh, Harbor Freight 7x12 mini lathe in case any of you guys are wondering. I'm taking it kind of uh, slow and gingerly here because I don't know exactly how hard I can push this lathe yet. I've only had it for a couple days. And my previous lathe experiences with a uh, South Bend Tornado 17 inch swing by about a 48 inch bed, which had more than enough power for just about anything. Alright, after some moderately successful machining of the filler neck, now it's time to weld it in place. Uh, I wish I had enough skill to do this all in one pass all the way around, but I don't. So I have to be careful and blend my starts and stops very well. And we'll get the filler neck welded in nice and smooth and pretty. Alright, the final step in this uh, fabrication process is to weld on this mounting bracket, which looks a little out of proportion to me, but this is according to his drawing. So that's how I'll weld it up. You can see I'm using the uh, third hand there to hold it while I tacked it. And I just left it on while I welded it because having an extra ground is never a bad idea. Alright folks, that completes our project on the coolant overflow tank. I know in the beginning I called it an oil tank, but I was wrong. It is a coolant overflow tank. Um, I've got it propped up like this because it's just too hot to touch. I just finished welding it. Um, as you can see, it's all been uh, wire brushed and it's going to be anodized red to match his uh, ATV. Last thing we put on was a mounting plate. It's got two quarter inch bolts this plate is three inches wide and it looks way out of proportion if you ask me but the customer is always right so I drew the, or he drew it I welded it God help him not with my welds with his design well thanks for joining me um, thanks online metals for supplying the aluminum for this project Thanks to uh, Eastwood for supplying the equipment. And thanks to you 
for watching. Now get on out of here, because there ain't no more to see today. Really, go. I'm leaving in a minute. I'm going to turn the lights out. It's going to be dark. But you're going to feel silly.